Welcome back to the channel, Drew here, and I've watched several videos, including Lucky Lopez's video on the used car market collapse and the coming collapse of the used car market. And am I in that camp? Uh, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about what we're seeing right now. We're going to talk about what cities are going to get hardest, which cars are going to get hit first, and which cars are not going to be touched, and more importantly, what to do about it. So let's jump in. All right, guys, if you haven't seen Lucky Lopez's video, he's done uh, a, a very popular video that kind of blew up and then a follow-up video. I watched them both. There's some things that I agree with. I think he's spot on. Uh, there's others that I think he's a little bit off based only on, you know, his geographic location. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, first, let's, we're, we're going to cover a lot of things in this video, but we're going to do it very, very concisely, very, very quickly. So uh, the first thing we want to talk about is what signs are we seeing right now? So what we're seeing right now is, he's right, repos are up. And all the, the stimulus check ballers, people who, you know, got all these stimulus checks and bought cars that they really couldn't afford. They're, they're, they weren't, uh, you know, able to, to keep those cars. And they're already getting repoed and the repo yards are filling up. That is correct, okay? Uh, we also are um, seeing auction prices dropping for the first time in, in a long time. Okay, um, recession talk is everywhere and going into a recession, people are a little more, uh, you know, less likely to spend money on things that they don't necessarily need. They're likely to keep their cars a little bit longer. That's definitely true. Uh, I, I am, uh, you know, not quite as bearish on the, the, the used car market as Lucky is, but uh, I am 100% bearish on the, the economy. And um, I think the economy is going right into a recession. I think we're already started and it's gonna get bad and maybe really bad. Uh, but um, the, the, we also are seeing a change in consumer purchasing. So people that are buying cars or people that have to buy a car and not necessarily people that just want to buy a car, that's true. Um, and the opportunists have already sold their vehicles. So people who, you know, bought a car and then all of a sudden their car's worth 10 grand more, they paid for it. Those people who are opportunists who are like, dude, I can drive my second car for a little while and I might as well just cash this out. Those, most of those people have already cashed out. And so, uh, you know, we're kind of seeing things settle in as far as that goes. Um, now, what cities are going to get hit the hardest? The cities are going to get hit hardest are the boomer bus cities. And Lucky is in Las Vegas, which is, I don't know if there's a bigger boomer bus city. When things are, when the economy's great and people are traveling and people are spending money, Vegas is way up. And when uh, the economy gets tight and, uh, you know, people are not traveling, people are not spending money, uh, uh, Vegas gets hit first. And so that's what he's seeing is, um, you know, massive amounts of repos because people are, car are starting to, although I think people are still traveling uh, a lot, and I've already talked about this earlier, people are going to travel this entire year and then it's going to slow down really quickly. Uh, but people going to Vegas to just blow money, uh, that's uh, already like clamped down and changing. So... Um, uh, Vegas is going to get hit hard. Miami's going to get hit hard. The party city, Miami, I mean, had a 2021 in the Toro business. If you had uh, high-end cars in Miami, man, you made a killing in 2021. Uh, it's going to slow down this year, and next year it's going to Miami's going to be uh, a, a tough city for the Toro business as far as the higher-end cars and stuff like that. There's not going to be a lot of partying in Miami in 2023. I can tell you that. Uh, now, uh, Los Angeles uh, is going to get hit. Hawaii is going to get hit. People, uh, you know, are, are still traveling, but. They're not spending the, the, the airfare and the more expensive money to go to Hawaii, and that's going to get hit. Safe cities. Which cities are safe? Safe cities are D.C. Uh, D.C. is always uh, safe because, uh, you know, when recession hits, D.C. is the last place that uh, um, I mean, gets hit. Uh, another big city that, um, you know, is kind of similar to these other cities we were talking about, but they're going to be safe, is the city of New York because Toro just moved into New York. Now it's legal to do a tour in New York. And so uh, New York is actually going to have kind of a, a boom year uh, because they've never really, people who, who needed tour vehicles have had to go to New Jersey and the outskirts of New York State. New York is a growth area for Toro. Um, if you live in New York State, uh, uh, this is a great time to get in because you've had, you have no competition. Now, what vehicle is going to get hit first? I've got two groups of people, uh, two groups of vehicles. Uh, one, a group of cars that are going to get 
hit first and some are going to get hit hammered hard as far as the values of vehicles and then group number two which is kind of like safe vehicles in my opinion um, or at least are, are going to take a lot longer before the values of those come come down so the first group group number one is uh, most three to six year old cars uh, on the market are going to get hammered these are the cars that have shot up you know 40 45 50 55 percent in value that is not sustainable for a depreciating asset and, um, and they, these vehicles are going to get hit, hammered and get it can get hit hard so three to six year old cars these are cars outside of manufacturer's warranty and these are cars that have seen the biggest increase in values because people couldn't get new cars so they've kind of started targeting other cars and worked their way down so uh, most vehicles three to six year old cars um, you know that's where we see the biggest increase in values and that's where you're gonna see the biggest decrease in values uh, any boring regular used cars uh, he's right that car lots are have started to fill up as far as vehicles on the lot the problem is most of them are very bland very boring and regular cars uh, the, 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 the exciting cars are not staying on lots the cars that people really want are not are not staying on lots the cars that nobody really wants it's the options are not good the color is not good they're just bland they're boring those are the cars that are filling up dealers lots and the reason they're 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 they're, they're stuck with them so to speak is because they bought they spent too much money on these boring uh cars that that are not exciting so as far as that goes so boring cars regular cars uh, low mileage gas guzzlers are getting hit they're getting hit and they're getting hit these are the, the first group that's going to get hit the dodge v8s the dodge hemis and you got you know dodge has a whole fleet of uh of hemi v8s and those vehicles that the gas guzzlers uh big trucks you got trucks with lift kits and that kind of stuff those vehicles are going to get hit hard they're already getting hit hard because people can't afford to drive them uh when gas doubles and triples uh, it really makes it much less and people's um, you know budgets get tighter it makes it much less value uh, viable to keep these gas guzzling cars they're getting hit hard new car market uh, which, which vehicles are going to be affected in the new car market I, I think that the new car market is going to be safe for a while because um, they're still not making a lot of vehicles they're not making enough vehicles that's for sure but if there's one part of the new car market that might get hit it's the trucks the big trucks uh, big trucks might be might get hit. Uh, people are just not upgrading to trucks, and I think you'll see the prices on new trucks start to come down, and, and maybe some small incentives get introduced. Uh, but basically, most of the new car market should be okay. You know, high priced luxury vehicles are going to get hit. Uh, people are, are remember the, the 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 economy has 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 done a complete 180 where people had lots of extra money and are spending that money, and now they don't have money, and it's gone extremely fast. And so the higher end luxury cars are going to get hit. You know, cars, you know, 80 to 150,000 uh, are going to get hit. They're going to get hit hard. The high end luxury cars, even more expensive cars, are going to get hit. What is not going to get touched? What group is safe for a while? Uh, eventually, there may be a, you know, eventually all the cars will, will get hit. But uh, the second group is a much safer group to own. If you're a tour host and you have a fleet of vehicles, I want as many cars in group number two um, than, I, than I do have in group number one. Um, so number two is any newer redesigned models. New models that just came out, redesigned models, models that uh, you know have a big upgrade or they're aesthetically look totally different or have brand new features, totally redesigned models. Uh, remember, if, if any new vehicle came out or was redesigned in 21 or 22, uh, or, or is coming out in 2023, um, there's very limited quantity of these vehicles because they weren't able to make a lot of them. So those vehicles are going to hold their value really, really well. Uh, most two year or old or less. Again, same reason. Limited amount of new vehicles were, were made. Um, I mean, some of the lowest ever in history in the last two years of new vehicles made. So there's less vehicles out there and people who are looking to buy a, maybe they can't find a brand new vehicle, so they have to go for one that's, you know, got 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 miles. Those vehicles are going to hold their value. They're going to hold their value well. Uh, so most vehicles, two years or less, um, you know, um, they're still under warranty. Um, a lot of those were sold with marked up prices, and that's going to keep the, the, the price of those vehicles up. High efficient vehicles um, are going to, are safe. Um, you know, when, when gas prices is at four or five, six dollars a gallon, um, the, 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 the better, the more economical cars, the hybrids, the, the plug-in hybrids, the electric cars, the uh, even just super high efficient cars are safe. 
Um, those are the cars. The, the people that are buying vehicles, they're downsizing from the big V8 or the truck to a more economical car. And so if the car is, the more efficient the car is, the more safe the value is uh, in the short term. Um, also, um, very unique vehicles are safe. A limited uh, um, you know, vehicles that are unique. That's why the Maverick is such a great vehicle. That's why uh, my Defender is such a great vehicle. If someone's looking for a Maverick or a Defender, there's nothing else really to cross shop it. Um, you know, you kind of, for the Maverick, you have the Santa Fe, but, um, you know, there's just not a lot of competition for unique vehicles, okay? Uh, and those vehicles are going to be safe. Um, so, what to do? Consider selling or trading any vehicles in Group 1. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying sell them, I'm saying consider sell them. And so how do you evaluate whether you should sell them or not? So ask yourself, I got several questions. Uh, crash, quite, first question is, how far away is your slow season? So, you know, if your slow season is a month or two away, maybe it's a great time to cash out on the, those vehicles, okay? Um, how much profit can you secure by selling that vehicle? Um, you know, if that vehicle, if you're going to get, you know, in some cases, you might get four or $5,000 more for that vehicle right now than you will in six months from now. Um, that is a real scenario. So in that case, if, if my slow season is coming up quickly and uh, I've already made a good bit of money on the vehicle, I've already, um, and by selling that vehicle or trading in that vehicle, I can secure the profit. Remember, you don't make, you make money when you purchase the car. You secure that money when you sell the car. Until you sell that car, nothing you've made is profit, okay? Because anything can happen. Um, how much do you owe on the car? Uh, how high a mileage is on the car? Uh, how low is your rate on the car? This is an important one. Um, you know, if, if you've got a, a 2% rate or 2.5% or 3% rate, uh, you're not going to get that rate again. Uh, the banks, lucky is right as far as the banks are going to be restricting loans. They're going to make uh, uh, loans. The rates are higher, but they're also not going to improve uh, approve, uh, stretched out loans. Um, people who have a lot of cars are going to have a harder time getting more cars, uh, auto loans. So the banks are going to get very, very strict, and the rates are going to get up, and you're not going to replace that rate. So if you've got a super low rate, you know, that's a reason not to trade a car, okay? Um, um, can you swap a Group 1 car for a Group 2 car? This is a great time to do this. So maybe you have a Group 1 car that's, that, that is in that group that's going to get hit as far as the value of the vehicle. Now's the time, if possible, to trade that vehicle in for a Group uh, 2 car if you're not going to take too much of a hit on the interest rate, okay? Um, number two. Uh, number one is consider selling or trading, uh, um, you know, Group number one cars. Number two is ride it out. Ride it out. Uh, if you've got any um, extremely low rates, um, you're not going to replace those rates. Um, just keep those rates off. Pay those cars off, okay? Um, only trade um, vehicles on hot new reservations or models. Maybe you've had some reservations, some other cars coming out. Maybe an electric car, maybe a Maverick, maybe a, a Bronco. Um, only trade in cars on hot new cars that are, you know are in heavy into Group 2 territory, okay? Um, uh, remember, the auto industry, the, the uh, auto market is not the auto rental market. They're two different markets. And, um, you know, in the short term, we're not going to see a slowdown in, and in, 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 you will see a slight slowdown in the rental market eventually, but it's not going to be as drastic as you see uh, the, in the used car market, okay? Uh, they're two totally different markets. You have to value them separately. So it's not time to just sell all your fleet because, again, people are going to travel this whole year till the end of the year, and then we can evaluate what the, um, you know, what the economy is going to do. So, um... Um, uh, they're, they're two totally different markets as far as that goes. So if I was trading in vehicles, I only want to trade in Group 1 vehicles for Group 2 vehicles, new reservations, hot new vehicles that I know are going to stay in that value. Uh, number three is um, wait to buy any Group 1 vehicle. So uh, this is not the time. Any vehicles in that Group 1, wait, wait. The prices are going to come down and there's an opportunity, maybe six months, maybe 12 months from now to get some real deals in that area. Um, um, as all these auto repos, repos get flooded on the market, if you want to get a, uh, you know, a, a, a V8 Dodge, give it about 8 to 12 months and you're going to be able to get a deal on one, especially if gas prices are still high. Okay, Focus on paying high interest loans. Any of your loans that are high interest, uh, the highest interest that you have, uh, um, you know, focus on paying those loans down. 
And uh, next is bank cash, bank up cash. You know, if you've got a profitable Toro business and you're bringing in cash flow, now's the time to just bank up cash. Instead of growing your fleet, just bank up cash so you're ready, uh, you know, as these prices start to drop and you may be able to find some really good deals. Um, so now's the time. I've been preaching, uh, you know, lock in 2% rate loans and buy new cars, buy new cars, buy new cars, because it just made more sense when inflation is 8, 9, 10% and you can get 2% interest with good credit. I mean, of, of cars that are going to go up in value, that was just a no brainer. Now's the time to bank up cash and purchase cash cars if you're going to grow your fleet. Okay, uh, um, you, you, your interest rates are going to double and possibly triple in some cases um, on auto loans and the banks are going to get very, very strict. That's fine. Just bank up cash and if you're going to grow your fleet, add them one by one and, and, and um, try to pay the cars cash uh, as far as that goes if you want to grow. So, uh, all right guys, that's it for today. I'm trying to bring you the very best, most up to date uh, info in the automotive industry and the Toro business. So until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in and I'm out.